Um, good day, everyone. My name is Deshan Deeb, and I am an um, assistant lecturer in the uh, Department of Robotics, Mechatronics, Dynamics, and Strength of Machines, and a PhD student here in Moscow Power Engineering Institute. Today, we're going to talk about mechatronics and robotics in nuclear industry. Um, first of all, what is mechatronics? Mechatronics is an interdisciplinary branch of engineering. It is uh, integration of electrical, mechanical, and electronic engineering. And it also includes a um, combination of robotics, electronics, computer science, uh, telecommunication, control system, and so on. And robotics, it's, um, so robotics is a part of mechatronics engineering. And in our work, we, we discuss uh, designing, construction, operation, and the use of robotics. So first of all, the question, why do we need robotics? The simple answer is we need robotics to make our life easier. But how robotics can make our life easier? So it can work uh, in uh, harder, harder environments to avoid the human exposure to temperature, high temperature, radiation, um, dangerous jobs. And they also can handle heavy lifting loads and repetitive uh, tasks, uh, toxic substance, and so on. So to carry on these uh, activities, the robot needs to be uh, able to improve, able to uh, use artificial intelligence, improved sensors, and uh, so on. So as we all know, nuclear power industry is one of the most dangerous uh, environment to work on. Um, this environment uh, offers high temperature, humidity, and radiation. That makes a human exposure really dangerous. Um, so in this industry, we use um, robots like a mean of teleoperating uh, to handle high risk movement, uh, like um, drawing a map of uh, contamination areas, uh, the surveillance, and so on. So what are the special specifications that are needed in nuclear industry? First of all, there is, um, there is a concern about the effect of radiation and other hazardous environment on the robot. Until now, it's really hard to, um, for our sensors and actuators to work in high radiation areas. So this is a part we are working on. We have also a technological question, such as the reliability. What if a robot stop working in the middle of some important, ma some important job? So we're talking about uh, capabilities. Like um, we need robots that are specific for one task. We have uh, an economical questions. We have uh, the problem of impl implementation of new technologies. And we also have the safety issues, which is the most important when we're talking about nuclear. So the special the attention to use um, to, sa to safety because to safety in a nuclear power plant was uh, due to the major catastrophic in this industry like the Three Mile I Island in the USA. We have Chernobyl and the last of them Fukushima. So this uh, technology was first implemented, uh, robot technology was first implemented after the um, Three Mile Island accident in the, UA, the USA, and uh, we they used these robots to uh, clean up the um, radioactive waste. Uh, so um, the current use of robotics in the MBB. The current use of robotics are is still less than expected, and it's u mostly used after uh, the catastrophe, sadly, and it's just used for cleaning. Because again, with the improving technologies, we robots are able to do more and more, but we still trust them less and less. We need uh, a high accuracy, really high accuracy, and we is still power plant uh, still afraid of using robot in uh, some kind of measuring. Okay, uh, one of the promising aspects of robotics is exoskeletons. And the first exoskeleton was um, made or uh, applied in the nuclear uh, power plant after the Fukushima accident. 
um, a company called Cyberdyne offered this um, Iron Man like suit to the uh, cleanup workers. Uh, the exoskeleton uh, roar and uh, under the exoskeleton there is an uh, anti radiation tungsten clothing which weighs about 15 kilograms. And we know, like, the average human being can wear clothes about one, two kilograms max. So 15 kilograms, it's really heavy. So the workers can only work for a few minutes uh, at best. But with the use of this um, Iron Man suit, we can work for this kind of support for up 60 kilograms of uh, protective materials. So workers can work for a few more hours. And um, uh, this exoskeleton was, uh, uh, and this exoskeleton has sensors that are attached to the skin of the workers, and it could predict the movement of uh, of the person wearing it, so it can help him to do the required action with uh, less effort. Uh, another robot uh, robots was built by Mitsubishi, and. Uh, it also it's called the uh, power assistant suit, uh, PAS. And uh, another and a few other companies are working in this direction right now. So today in our uh, department, we're working on also exoskeletons. We're trying to build it for medical reasons, but uh, it can be applied for a great range of uses. Um, on this slide, we can see X, uh, X H2, a real walk, and uh, Elex. And the last one is a prototype was made here in um, the Department of Robotics. And um, well, we're expecting this uh, kind of work to be used in, well, medical reasons first. And it can be applied to other aspects like, uh, as we said, nuclear and power plant. Thanks for your time.